Hi Year 10, um, hope you're all having a decent week. Last, or oh, and yeah, exciting for some of you, I should be heading back into school. Um, so last week you did the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Revolution along with that. And this week we're doing the very last of what's called the Cold War Crises. So these were when things got quite bad, the kind of height of the tension. And then after, so actually next week I'm going to set you some Seneca, just to give some of you a bit of a chance to catch up. Um, because I sent out that topic list about where you all are in, or so you could all see where we are in the Cold War course. And I crossed off the topics that you'd already done in school. And then I've also highlighted in yellow all the topics that we've covered on Show My Homework, where you've been set work by either me or by Miss Pepper. OK, so that's a chance for you guys to spend the week going on Seneca Learning and consolidating what you've done. I know some of you have completed a lot of it, but there's nothing stopping you having another go or going back to a part that you felt you didn't do so well on and maybe getting a better score. Um, so that's going to be next week. And it's also a chance for some of you to go back to maybe some topics you've missed or that you haven't done the work for and go back over those. You can do those either in the booklets that I've sent home for some of you or by using what's on Show My Homework, OK? So hopefully that will be a bit of a chance for you to catch up. After that, we're moving on to a period called détente, which means relaxation in French or something like that. And uh, that's when things calm down in the Cold War. OK, it wasn't quite the end of the Cold War. There was actually a little mini second Cold War, but it's we're getting quite close to the end of the topic now. So well done. OK, so today we're doing the Prague Spring. So if you want to write any notes about what I'm saying, it's called the Prague Spring is the main thing. Now, just a couple of notes before we start. First thing, now I'm sure you're going to kick me because you know this already or be cross with me. But anyway, Prague is the capital of Czechoslovakia. And Czechoslovakia was one of the countries in the Eastern Bloc, OK? So one of the communist countries controlled by the Soviet Union, all right? Also, as I think some of you might remember, after the Cuban Missile Crisis, they got rid of Khrushchev because they felt like he was weak. And so there's a new Soviet leader called Brezhnev. Now, I strongly recommend, I always spell it Brez with an H, Nev. I mean, that's how it's spelled, but that's how I remember to spell it, Brez H Nev. Now, I would strongly recommend you have a little look at Brezhnev online. He has some of the most impressive eyebrows of any historical figure I think I have ever seen. I don't really do them justice here, okay? He has seriously impressive eyebrows. But anyway, so he's the new Soviet leader. So we've got Brezhnev now, right? And just to put into context very briefly, we're in 1968, so the Cuban Missile missile crisis has happened things are beginning to relax we're meant we're entering that period of detente but they haven't completely relaxed um it's that's also partly why the prague spring happens is the czechoslovakians think they can relax and actually they can't and this is the last big cold war crisis of the middle of the cold war before things relax a bit okay so if you were doing on a graph we're going doo, 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 and we're going to head, head back down so causes of the prague spring why did it happen? So, in Czechoslovakia in 1968, the economy was quite weak, living standards were quite poor, and students and writers were complaining about a real lack of freedom. People weren't particularly happy with communism in Czechoslovakia in 1968, and they wanted a change. Okay, so that's really ultimately what led to the event, if you're making your notes, if you're doing cause, event and consequence, the event, which is the Prague Spring. Now, the first thing that happened was in January 1968, a man called Dubček becomes the leader of Czechoslovakia. And he is a bit more relaxed and he's a bit more into reform, which means change. OK, so he was prepared to change a few things. However... He wasn't anti-communist. I've actually gone to the trouble of writing I heart communism next to Dubček because he still liked communism. And uh, Dubček also hearts the Warsaw Pact, that group of countries that were all the communist countries together, led by the Soviet Union. He was actually really good buddies with Brezhnev. OK, they were, they were pals, 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 pals. However, he wanted to relax communism in Czechoslovakia. He felt like it needed to relax a bit. And actually Brezhnev at first said, yeah, relax it a little bit. So he brings out what's called socialism with a human face. OK, that means communism, but a bit more human, a bit more nice. 
a bit more relaxed, a bit more smiley. So relax, that meant relaxed censorship, so people could print and publish what they liked as newspapers. It meant that Soviet powers in Czechoslovakia were going to be reduced. The Czechoslovakian government was going to have a bit more of its own power to make its own decisions. Um, it allowed for other political parties to maybe come along and have a say, which isn't very communist. Um, and there were some economic reforms, so they were going to maybe start trading with some of the capitalist nations just to boost their economy. And the power of the secret police, because a lot of the communist countries had a secret police. And it might remind you a bit of the Gestapo in Germany, actually, the sorts of things they used to do were quite scary. Um, but though the power of that group, of that secret police in Czechoslovakia, was going to be reduced as part of, I'm going to go back to him, Dubček's reforms. Okay, Dubček. And I remember him because he's Dubček, the leader of Czechoslovakia. Thank you. Um, right, and that whole period of relaxation is called the Prague Spring, the new beginning, things relaxing, things being a bit better, um, and lots of people were really happy with it, okay? There were some old communists that, not old, but it was generally people from the older generation that actually were really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The older generation were really loyal to communism, okay? And they didn't like the Prague Spring so much and they started complaining to Brezhnev in the USSR, okay? But for many people, it was a more, more happy time. However, there were quite a few consequences and it, the impact of the Prague Spring was quite great, especially in Czechoslovakia and for all the countries in the Eastern Bloc. So, going back to Brezhnev of the USSR with his eyebrows, he was really worried. He was like, oh my goodness, is this going to be the end of communist rule? The end of Soviet control? I can't possibly have that. Although I asked Dubček to do this, he's gone too far. Okay, so Brezhnev decided that the Soviet Union or the USSR was losing control in Czechoslovakia. And so what he did was sent in 500,000 Warsaw, Warsaw Pact troops. Okay, so those are communist troops, basically, and some tanks were sent into Prague to stop the Prague Spring and this relaxation. And actually, there were more people that were joining in. There was some student protests against communism, but the Warsaw Pact troops went in to try and stop it. Now, when those troops went in, actually, the Czechs or the Czechoslovakians responded quite peacefully. They actually are quite famous for putting flowers in the tanks or in the soldiers' hair on top of their helmets. And they only really, they didn't fight, they just stood in front of tanks for the most part. The whole kind of invasion with 500,000 troops and tanks only resulted in less than 100 um, Czechoslovakian deaths. Okay, so it, was, it wasn't a particularly violent um, upright, well, it wasn't a violent end to the Prague Spring, okay? Um, however, there was one famous student protest, I think his name was Jan Pavic, he actually stood in front of a tank and burned himself alive um, and burned himself to death as a protest against communism that is remembered very much. Um, Dubček sadly was removed from power, so he's gone. And Soviet control was restored, very much restored, okay? They are now back in control. And Brezhnev actually brought out a doctrine. We love a doctrine in the Cold War. We've had the Truman Doctrine. We're now going to have the Brezhnev Doctrine. So this isn't an American one. It's a Russian one. Brezhnev Doctrine. Brezhnev said, the USSR has the right to invade any Warsaw Pact country so that's any of the countries in the Eastern Bloc or any of the communist countries that is threatening the security of the Warsaw Pact. So what he argued was that what was happening in Czechoslovakia with the Prague Spring was threatening the security of the Warsaw Pact. So he had the right to invade. OK. And what this ultimately meant was that the other countries in the Warsaw Pact were now under strict Soviet control. So countries like Hungary, Poland, Czechoslovakia again, were under strict Soviet and Russian control. The West looked on, they condemned what Russia was doing, but they did very little, okay? And for that, they were kind of, um, they were criticised as well for saying, well, you were against communism and now you're not going to do anything. 
And although, on the other hand, countries like communist countries like Yugoslavia and Romania actually became closer to communist China because they weren't happy with what the Soviet Union were doing. So we've gone through why the Prague Spring happened, what the Prague Spring was, and then the results of it, that invasion by the Soviet or by the Warsaw Pact troops and the Soviet Union, the Brezhnev Doctrine that came out and that tight control now that comes from the Soviet Union as a result of the events around the Prague Spring. So that is it for today. Now you've seen the video, um, please go on and have a go at the quiz. Have a look at the second video that I've posted below because it's again someone else talking through the events of the Prague Spring. I've also attached the BBC Bite Size um, information and they've got a video as well. So there's loads of things that you can do. Now the only thing I would say is if you have a revision guide and you are using it, the pages for this are a little bit spread out. So I'm just going to tell you very quickly, it's page 13 in the revision guide, then it goes to page 16. It does say all the words that are related to this, so it says Czechoslovakia, Prague Spring, and then it goes to page 19. So that's 13, 16 and 19, okay? That are the information on this in the revision guide if you're using that. Right, thank you very much Year 10. Hope that was helpful. Have a lovely week. Um, welcome back to school for a bit. Those of you that are popping in, I might even see some of you on Thursday. Um, please, again, email your teacher if you have any questions or you want to let, let them know that you've done some work. Anything like that, we're always really happy to receive some communication. And if you were in Miss Pepper's classes, remember you should be emailing me now. Take care. Have a good week. Bye.